Hello, my name is Matt and welcome to another CMake video. Today we're looking at an open source tool that I believe can help beginners create very simple C++ projects without having to worry about all the CMake around it and all of the infrastructure that goes into writing your first CMake program. Specifically, we're looking at the CMake init tool, which basically aims to create a CMake slash C++ project skeleton. So you can just go plug into VS code or your editor of choice and start coding without having to worry about all of the stuff that goes around writing the uh, the hello world. So let's get into it. I actually came across this a couple of weeks ago in one of the forums that I'm part of. And this project seems to be quite small. I mean, there isn't much to it apart from the uh, the CMake and the Python that makes the whole thing work. There's only like six contributors. And, and as far as I can tell, only one of these people here is the, the main contributor that basically wrote most of the stuff. But don't let that fool you because this is actually a very powerful and a very good idea that I believe can help anyone trying to get into C++. So as you can probably guess by now, this is a command line tool where you basically just type in CMake in it and you will create a directory containing your whole project structure uh, in a way that you already compiles. As soon as you plug the project into VS Code or your IDE of choice, uh, given you have the right requirements installed. So as you can see here, there's a there's a little bit of an usage uh, GIF here. Uh, I'm not really going to be you know explaining the whole thing, but yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go through all of this in, in a terminal anyway. So let's actually begin talking about the requirements and what you need to have installed in your system before you even install the tool so that it runs you know smoothly. If we scroll down here on the GitHub project itself, there is a list of requirements. For example, you need to have Python 3.8 or newer installed. You need to have CMake 3.20 or newer installed. You need to have Git installed, and the rest of them are optional stuff. However, if you are following this tutorial, if you are typing uh, everything I type in the terminal line by line, you should probably have Conan installed because that's what I'm going to use today. Or you can also opt to choose a VC package as your package manager as well, because this tool supports both VC package and Conan. So in my view, this gives the project some brownie points because it integrates package managers seamlessly. And just one more note on the requirements here. Uh, I am using Windows, so I've got all of these things already set up. Uh, and if you don't have all of these things set up in your Windows machine, make sure to go on Google and type it because I'm not going to be teaching you how to install all of the requirements. These are things you can probably just Google and install them very quickly. And also, I'm not just on Windows. I'm actually using WSL. In other words, I've got Ubuntu installed here on my Linux. So that's what I'm going to be using. And if you have used Ubuntu before, you probably know that whatever CMake you install from the apt package manager is not going to be a new version. It's probably going to be something like 3.16. As far as I know, 3.16 or 3.17. So the best way to install a new version of CMake, in other words, 3.20 or newer, is to actually uninstall it using sudo apt so sudo apt get auto remove i believe it is and then you type in cmake here and that will uninstall your cmake system version in my case, I don't actually have it installed via apt because I've installed it using pip. And believe it or not, if you do a sudo pip install CMake, that will install CMake uh, system-wide, but also a new version of CMake. So if I look here, CMake.version, I can see that it's 3.25. So this is a much better way to install CMake compared to apt, in my opinion, if you're using Ubuntu. So just look out for this little detail. So let's actually get into CMake init. Let's try to use it. So the first thing, once you've installed CMake init, which if you follow the tutorial here, the uh, the little guide they've got here on the GitHub. So if you don't, you know, your sudo install, uh, sudo pip install CMake in it, you should be able to use it from the command line like this here. And if you run it for the first time with no arguments, it will just give you a little help. In fact, if you do CMake in it help, it will actually give you a more cumbersome help, which is kind of what you need in this case. So all you can see here is that it's CMake in it, the rest of the stuff is optional. And the only thing I need is a path to the project. So that's what we're going to do here. Let's, let's do that. Let's put our project into the directory called project. And this is where it's going to launch the uh, setup wizard. I'm not going to talk through everything. I may talk about little things, but let's just go with it. So I'm going to put the name and the description and so on. Now, this is one of the things worth mentioning. You can either have a, an executable project, a header only project, or a static slash shared uh, library project. And this is one of the downsides, in my opinion, of this tool, because I may want to create an executable as well as a shared object out of my project, where, which obviously you can modify later on. You can modify the CMake and do that anyway. But for this particular example, let's just select the executable. The standard. And then here comes the, the optional stuff that you, you can have. For example, if you want to static analyze your, your project, you can have clang tidy enabled. I'm going to select yes. I'm not going to have CPP check. 
Uh, I'm going to choose Conan as my package manager here. And that's it. Voila, you've got a whole project now on the project directory here. So if I do, you know, tree here, you can see that quite a few files were generated for me automatically. And you can see that you've got your CMake lists here on the top. There you go, CMake lists, as well as something called the CMake pre presets.json and the CMake user presets.json. These two files is what allows you to quickly plug this project into your VS code. No matter where you are running from, you may be running from your home machine now, but you may be running the same project from, from your work. As long as you've got the, the same user presets, you should be able to just plug it into VS code and compile it in the same way, such as the flags, will, the compilation flags will be the same, the CMake flags will be the same, as long as you select the same preset. So this is what's very nice about this project. It generates that for you automatically. So you don't have to worry about learning that CMake feature. Uh, and if you're a beginner, this can you know help you out quite a lot. And another thing worth mentioning here is because we're using Conan, uh, we actually have to install the dependencies beforehand. Uh, with VC package, I'm not sure that's the case. I think you can just plug and play, but let's do that on this project here, just so we can actually open it on VS code and start compiling it and running our program. So yeah. So this is the command to install the dependencies, uh, given that you are building with debug, which, you know, this is a bit of a spoiler that we are going to be building in debug because we're going to select the developer uh, preset that the project gener generates for us. And that is the debug. Uh, so just make sure you pass the build type into Conan, otherwise it won't work. And I've had issues where I just try to install the release packages and it just doesn't build out of the box if you don't specify the build type equals debug here. So that's one of the things you should watch out for. And I'm going to zoom it in just so you can see that this uh, yeah and because of the way that the CMake in it offers uh, wrote the uh, the Conan file all of your Conan dependencies and you know CMake files that are related to your dependencies should be added inside the Conan directory so if you look at here you know there's a lot of Conan stuff here that was just generated for us and that is it I mean so now if you go into the root of the uh, generated project you can just open it with VS code and as soon as you open it with VS Code, it's going to ask you to select a user preset, I believe, right? So let's have a look at that. If it hasn't asked you to select a user preset, what you can do is Control Shift P and then select that preset. And then you select dev. And this is what we're going to be using to build our application in debug mode here. And you can see that there's many other uh, presets you can configure, such as, you know, CI coverage, CI sanitize. So if you're running this in a CI CD pipeline, these are the uh, presets available for you. So you can just build your project, for example, for test coverage here. So that's one of the cool things about this as well. But let's just select dev so we can build it. Uh, it should configure it for you automatically and you can see here that mine has already configured and once it's configured you should be able to just do a CMake build. So no errors as expected, no errors at all. The only thing that we got here is a warning, which was actually identified by our compiler, which is a good thing, but we don't really care too much about it. Uh, all we care about is that our executable here uh, was was created. And in, if I'm not mistaken, it's actually called, you know, the name of your project underscore exe, that's the target name. And when you compile it, you can see that it gets added to your build forward slash dev directory. And my particular executable here is called coding with ma, which is the name of my project. So this is where it added that executable. And if you're not sure uh, which name your executable should have, I recommend uh, going into the CMake lists and looking at, you know, what it does to the, uh, the main executable here. So you can see here, it creates an executable, it aliases it, the exe, and sets a property. Uh, so the output name is actually going to be called coding with ma and this is where this is how i know that this is the you know the main executable that the project generate generated for me and of course there's a lot more cmake that you can go dig into and learn a little bit more if, if you haven't already used certain functions that this this project generates for you but that's it i mean as far as you know as far as you the beginner is concerned there's nothing you need to actually edit here on the cmake lists you can just start typing your code uh, and compile it. Now, one of the things we haven't actually looked at is, you know, where is the code? Where is the main source code? And as you can probably guess, it's inside the source directory here. So if you look at the main.cpp, this is what gets compiled into our executable. I believe this, this file alone is the executable and there is a library that gets created automatically for us as well. But I'm not gonna go into the library side of things. Uh, if you want to just get some really quick and dirty code out, you'll probably be editing this main.cpp file here. This is where you put your hello world see out. So for example, let's just modify it and then print something else here. 
So I added a new uh, printout here that says hello there YouTube at coding with Matt and let's try and compile it. And then after it's compiled, let's actually run the executable. So as you probably guessed, the executable is inside build dev as we saw before coding with Matt. So let's go into that. And then ins we're inside build dev. So all we have to do is call coding with Matt. And there you go. Hello there YouTube at coding with Matt. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, this is essentially everything you need to know as a beginner. If you just want to get a quick CMake project out, use CMake in it. I'm just going to repeat this. You don't really have to know uh, the CMake that goes around it. You can just trust the project is going to create a nice CMake lists for you that, you know, already contains the uh, the executable that you want to create. And the rest is just you typing your code in the, into the main function here. Now, obviously there are downsides to it. Uh, for example, if you just want to create an executable as well as a few libraries, you will have to basically dig into the CMake and you have to copy and paste things. Uh, but you know, you may find that once you, you do that, there's quite a lot of bloat that you perhaps don't really need, such as if you're creating a shared library here. I know that CMake in it sets up all of the, uh, the export headers and all of the uh, macros related to exporting functions in, in libraries, uh, which you may not necessarily need depending on use case, but you know, this is way more than suitable if you just want to get a quick project out and not worry about the CMake around it. So I'm going to give this project a rating of maybe nine out of 10, because there are certain things that I've perhaps mentioned in this video that need, could be improved. Uh, but nonetheless, it's something that you, you know every beginner should know and every beginner should indeed use this to get a, a C++ project compiling in like under three minutes, which is you know something that not many people can do. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you've got any feedback, if you've got any suggestions or simply just want to say hi, feel free to post a comment below. Uh, check out my other videos as well, particularly if you want to actually debug this project here. You know, we've created a project, we can run it on the terminal, but you can't actually debug it using VS Code code uh, because you know the c making it doesn't yet support setting up the uh, the debugging automatically for you i actually have a video on how to debug uh, c plus plus projects using uh, vs code on w on windows wsl so check that out so that's it and bye bye